The name Plucky Squire invokes a sense of optimism that pairs well with its vibrant graphics and adventurous nature that invites you to dive into this storybook adventure with John and his Mojo crew that is sure to bring a smile to your face. In my 10 hours with the game, which according to the save file was exactly 600 minutes when I hit the credits, I found myself loving every aspect of the game from the characters to the narration. The music, gameplay, and story all drew me into a special feeling that takes me back to a time when I used to let my imagination run wild. Strange lands to visit and new people to help. This feels like the makings of a Mario or a Zelda game. A love letter to films like Toy Story or The Page Master, where kids bring life to the characters in their room. And with that, a magic is born that sustains the world's only possible through the power of imagination. As Jot, you are the main character. Your stories inspire the people of Mojo. And all is well as each new adventure creates a hit book that continues to enrapture the denizens, save for one magician who must always be the villain of the world, Humgrump. This time, Humgrump has discovered that the land of Mojo is a book, and there's a whole world beyond its pages. Granted, this world is Sam's bedroom, the boy whose imagination has brought all these characters to life. With stolen power, Humgrump has cast out Jot, and he must not only work to understand how this life outside his book works, but how to get back into the pages to stop Humgrump and save the land of Mojo. Thankfully, Ja is not alone. With a wise DJ of a wizard, Moonbeard, and his friends Thrash the Mountain Troll and Witch, Violet, this band of characters will work to stop Humgrump from taking over the book. You see, if a book is taken over by the villain, it's almost certain that the child reading it will become bored and tired of the story, eventually retiring the book to the bookcase where over time the magic of imagination will fade and with it the people of Mojo will freeze in time, unable to provide any joy or adventure. The Plucky Squire is set up to have 10 story chapters, with each chapter pushing you closer to your goal of stopping the evil wizard Humgrump. With bosses that challenge our heroes and good variety of enemy types, you won't find too many points where you'll get bored with the main slash and stab combat style that Jot provides. Abilities can be learned that echoes many of the familiar traits of a 2D top-down Legend of Zelda game, with Link being the sword-bearing protagonist. I really love this element of the game, and as you travel from page to page, you will be faced with puzzles that force you to think outside the box to complete. The further into the game you go, the more complex the puzzles will get, adding new elements as you understand to new powers you obtain throughout the game. There's a good balance between 2D top-down gameplay and 3D platformer. When out of the pages and onto Sam's desk, Jot will have to jump, roll, and sometimes fly in 3D space to get to a predetermined end to pick up an ability that will further the story and clear the current obstacle. The real kicker here is when Jot gains the ability to manipulate the book he's from. Being able to turn pages or flip the book will open up a whole new level of puzzle solving that is well monitored by a tiny version of Moonbeard called Minibeard. These little guys are everywhere. There's a puzzle and offer on-demand hints that can be ignored if you want to take a stab at figuring it out. The hints provided are subtle yet guided and give you just enough to know where you should start without providing the end solution. It feels rare these days to find a hint system built into the game that does so well and keeps the theme as it all works within the game. The boss fights are callbacks to different genres, and there's always a sense of, oh, I've seen this back in the day with X game. I love seeing what they could come up with next, and each time I was impressed with how they implemented it. The gameplay flows beautifully and has you moving forward almost all the time. I won't spoil the type of boss fights you get, but you, I will say that they are easy enough to understand while adding a challenge that lets you feel accomplished at the end. The callbacks to these bosses are great too, but I won't spoil that for the end of the game. You'll just have to play through it and see how those callbacks come back into it. Music is no slump either. The soundtrack has a mood that changes and goes along with the vibe of each page. There are multiple zones or areas in the game and each one has a motif that is backed by its own style of music. I'd say the heavy metal mountain where the trolls live was my favorite, especially since they have head banging bunnies. And yes, I would buy a plush if they sold it. <laughs> 
Accessibility has a good list of options as well, which I appreciate for a game of this style. While things like screen narration are missing, all the dialogue is text-based for those that typically like captions, and it is actually narrated. The options that are available for accessibility are things like jump assist, invincibility, one-hit kill, show hidden portals, and disable falling platforms. All are based around giving the player less resistance to obstacles that might dampen the experience. While there are only two difficulty settings, adventure mode, which is the default, and then story mode, which is easier, you could choose to make the game harder by not buying any new abilities or upgrading your attacks. As you play through the game, you'll find points where you can upgrade your damage and unlock art scrolls. Some of these are hidden in the world and take you to a gallery that shows off some of the development artwork from when they were building the game. I'd imagine something like this would come up as an art book for a coffee table if this was the year 2005. Aside from that, most of the secrets are well teased, on my, and on my first playthrough, I only missed 10 of the 50 art scrolls and 4 of the glitch birds. I'm still not sure what those are for. I would imagine the ability to replay chapters on the start screen will make it easier for me to go back through and 100% all of the collectibles, and for you achievement or trophy hunters, I'd say you won't have a hard time getting this game knocked out in about 10 to 15 hours at max. The only issue I actually had with this game deals with the save system, or should I say the lack of a save system. The game has autosave, and most of the time it's based on important changes to your character or the story. Upgrades will prompt a save or changes in chapter, but if you plan to back out, say, after a long play session, you'll get a nasty notification telling you how long it's been since your last save. With no manual save system and means of pushing an autosave without playing more of the game, you're left playing and keeping an eye on the bottom right of the screen till you see uh, the quill spin around and indicate a save has taken place. The real trouble with this is if you run into a bug where, in my case, you break part of a puzzle and have to back out to reset it. Depending on when the last save was, this can be rather painful, as I think the most time I lost due to a bug with a game cost me about 15 minutes. I think the total amount of time I lost was around half an hour, but I couldn't help but wish that there was a way to stop at any time and load in when I was ready to continue my adventure. Even with that hiccup, I have to say this is a wonderful game and really takes you on a journey that feels familiar to older games, but does it all within its own world and in a way that still feels like a fresh take giving life to a style of genre that isn't seen as frequently as your typical open world game or FPS shooter. Older fans of gaming will no doubt fall in love with the nostalgia hits in The Plucky Squire, and I genuinely hope newer gamers see this and support what is sure to be a hit new IP for the studio all possible futures. While I don't typically offer a score on games, I would say that this would have been a 10 out of 10 if not for the save system, which was enough of a bother to bring this to a 9 out of 10 at the time of this review. I would like to thank Devolver Digital for the opportunity to review this game and provide a code as such, and my heart goes out to all the folks over at All Possible Futures for creating such a wonderful game. Thank you so much.